So you want to make your school's drum line, do you? Well, you come to the right place, because today I got the top five tips and tricks on how to make your high school's tenor line, snare line, and or bass line. Tip number zero, and I'm not counting this as an actual tip because, well, it's kind of assumed, but tip number zero is you gotta be able to read sheet music. We all know what happened to Nick Cannon, okay? We gotta eliminate those kind of struggles right away. And hopefully most of you that are about to do marching band, you have gone through your band class and learned how to read music through that, but if you're joining late, then yeah, you're gonna need to figure out how to read music. I mean, you don't need to be like a sight reading extraordinaire or anything, but you have to be able to get a piece of music and take it home and be able to figure out how the rhythms go. And if you don't know how to do that, it's probably gonna take like a year of practice, so you better get on that. Tip number one is hold the stick properly. Yes, very simple concepts here. However, this is a thing that a lot of newbie drummers don't do right. The general guidelines to holding the stick, you want to divide it into four sections and you put your fulcrum, which is these two fingers, that is where the stick pivots from, like a seesaw. That goes in the bottom one fourth and then you will wrap your fingers around the back of the stick like such and then gently hold it into your palm. It should feel very relaxed. You don't want to be death gripping or squeezing. All right, there's going to be wiggle room in there so that when you turn up, the stick has a little bit of breathing room in there. Which brings us to tip number two. Play with good so there is a lot of stuff involved with technique, and if you have your own drum instructor, it'll probably be slightly different than what I'm saying, but well, if you're the boy or girl with no tech, then just do everything that I tell you. So step one is also part of this, right? You want to be holding the stick in the right place. You don't want to hold too far up. You don't want to hold too far back. You want to be as relaxed as possible in the set position, and when you turn up to do a full stroke, it starts with the initiation from the wrist, right? You don't want to start with some weird whippy arm movement or anything like that. So another thing that's involved with technique is the quality of sound you're producing. So here's the difference. This is me playing with a good sound quality. And this is what we call feather tapping. Now it's all about the speed that the stick is traveling to get to the drum head and that comes from staying relaxed and using good technique and some back finger support as well as focusing on the fulcrum. It's a lot of stuff and you're gonna have to practice it every day for like two hours in order to get good at it. Okay, so now we got the snare drum, and if you are in a drum line that plays match grip, everything is essentially the same as on tenors. However, most drum lines nowadays play with this weird kind of grip. The traditional grip is something that makes no sense to play with anymore because it was invented for rope snares because the drum has a tilt, but we still do it even when the drum doesn't have a tilt because, well, it's kind of cooler looking to do back sticks. So the way to hold traditional grip, you want to do just like we did before, divide the stick up into four parts, put your fulcrum, which is this part of your left hand, put that in the bottom fourth of the stick. Then you wrap these two fingers around like so, put your thumb on top of your pointer finger, and then your ring finger touches the bottom of the stick, and that's the set position just like that. Common errors are to have your hand like kind of up like this. That is very terrible, and you can't rotate without moving your whole arm. A hack to make sure you're doing it right is to have your thumb, the top of your thumb should be like directly up. If your thumb is like pointing that way, then you're doing it wrong. So similar to the match grip, when you turn your stick up, uh, these fingers will be some breathing room in there. Uh, however, the fulcrum, which is this, that should always stay intact. Okay, so now we get to the bass drum, same idea, divide the stick up into four parts, although the bass drum mallet is smaller than a normal stick, so your hand will be uh, pretty close to the butt, like the very back of the mallets. So when we go up to set position, uh, we don't want this, right, stick flat. We also don't want this stick vertical. We want uh, something right in the middle of that. And then the turnout, again, this will be different depending on who is instructing you. Uh, some people like the uh, wrist break where you play similar like you would on a normal drum. The other way is to do like a turn out as if you were turning a doorknob, just like, oh, not like that one, uh, like the other kind of doorknob where you go like this to it. I kind of play more towards that second method. I just think it feels more natural to turn out that way. 
Also involved with technique is two heights. The ability to stop the stick down after you play and then play the next stroke low. That's an exercise we like to call accent tap in the drumline world, and I have a whole video about exercises that I like to use, and I will leave that link in the description. Lesson number three, learn and memorize all of your school's exercises and music as soon as possible. So when you go to rehearsal, you are going to spend a lot of time learning and repping all the exercises. However, if you show the initiative to show up to rehearsal with all this stuff learned already, that'll save a lot of time and it will show your instructors that you have that extra drive to make the drum line. Along with that, you wanna make sure you learn all the exercises with a metronome at a variety of different tempos and moving your feet, marking time in place to the music. That will be good to do all that. <laughs> Tip number four is get really, really good at a double stroke roll. This is going to be the most important rudiment ever in your life. There are all kinds of rudiments and different rhythms that you'll be playing in a drumline setting, but the double stroke roll is mandatory and completely necessary in order to play pretty much all of the show music you're gonna get. Some good exercises to help with that are the standard double beat exercise, the chicken and a roll exercise is also a very good one, And once you get up to snuff, you can do the triplet rolls exercise. Again, these are all included in the warm up packet that I talked about previously, but double stroke roll, that is the most important rudiment you're gonna need to practice. Every single day, practice that for at least three hours. And finally, tip number five is learn the other rudiments. Percussive Arts Society has a list of 40 standard rudiments, and these are all good ones to practice. However, there are eight rudiments that you're gonna encounter more than any of the other ones that are in that list, and those are, number one, the double stroke roll, as we just talked about, most important one. Get really good at that. Number two is the paradiddle. Number three is the paradiddle diddle. The fourth one I think you should learn is the flam. Followed by the flam accent. Then the flam tap. Then the Swiss army triplet. And the last super important one I think you should do is the inverted flam taps. Like I said, all the 40 essential rudiments in the PAS list, they're all good for general chop building and figuring out how to play, but those eight, they cover all of the techniques that you're gonna have to know in order to be good at marching percussion. So I recommend practicing those the most. Bonus tip here is to listen to the feedback of your instructors. You can only gain so much from watching a video and practicing to what I say, but actually having live instructors there giving you feedback in real time, that is gonna be the most important information that you will have to take in and apply to the best of your abilities. So if you apply all of those tips and tricks, I can 100% guarantee that you will have a better chance of making the drum line. I'm not gonna guarantee that you'll make it, okay? I don't have that much faith in you. So practice all of those things every day for 100 hours a day. Click on this video to check out the warm-up packet that I wrote, and have a good morning. <laughs>